Put on your dancing shoes and do that awesome jig you love to do because it's Lucky Time Explosion! Yeah. Yeah. Trading your mind. Welcome. Welcome. Hollywood voice effects. Yeah, and don't forget to like, and don't forget to subscribe, and don't do all forget that. to embrace us in your <laughs> lives every day. <laughs> Hold us close. And cuddle with us. Welcome. Uh, happy International Women's Day, Morgan. Yay. That's what's going on. Mom, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Same, Mom. Uh, the Whitney Biannual is coming up. Oh. Which Whitney? The Whitney Museum. Oh. Yeah. Okay. You ever, you ever been to the Whitney Biennial? I haven't. I what do you know about the Whitney Biennial? I know that uh, I don't know much. Sorry, you got me. <laughs> I'm I'm like you it's know. It's one of the most important shows in art, and explain that happens to, every year. Explain to us why this year. is. Why is this the case? Um, well, it's one of the longest <laughs> running. Mm. I, I know that for sure. How uh, long? Um, well, I know that the the one that everyone talks about is the 1933. Hmm. Apparently, in 1933, they had a showing at the Whitney Biannual that like made some people upset or was very controversial for the way they chose to depict American art because that's kind of the point of the Whitney Biannual, right? Mm -hmm. It's a every other year um, showcase of the state of art in America. Okay. And in the last few years, they've kind of loosened up their restriction on what counts as America because we are, you know, very influential all over the world. Go us. Um, but so now if anybody has a relation to America, so like Costa Rica is, or stuff like that. Everyone is America it. now. Everyone. Yeah. It's like that Randy Newman song. Which one? Political Science. Ah. Uh, I remember know. that one? Well, you know, I don't know. <sighs> Randy Newman. I love that song. I love LA. Dee, 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 dee. We love it. Because yeah, that, it's, that's a good one. Because it's at the end of uh, it's a naked gun. Mm. When Leslie Nielsen, uh, Nielsen is um, the umpire in the baseball game. Right. And uh, yeah, must kill the queen. Well, great, great movie. I think even more important than the Whitney Biannual, though, you guys should check out the Every Woman Biannual, which was formerly known as the Whitney Houston Biannual. That's pretty awesome. Do, do they hold it at the Thunderdome? <laughs> no, they should, definitely. Uh -huh. But yeah, the Every Woman Biannual is actually... Um, was something because the Whitney, the Whitney biannual is like always a point of contention. You know, somebody's always mad about something. There's protesters outside because the, uh, I think it was like 2015, there's a bunch of protests because the people who run the Whitney and like the, who's the wing is named after in there were like um, war profiteers. Hmm. Like, you know, that family would have like a big stake in like some sort of defense contractor. Uh, and so people who are like anti war protesters outside in 2015. In 2000, like, um, or I mean, like back in 1933, I think, think there was that a big Whitney identity issue. Chooses well. to work with people who are controversial, mm. or, or it just so happens to be that way sometimes. That's actually a good question. I think personally that it just kind of happens to be that way because I feel like it's mm. such an important event, and it's well, it's been held up as such an important event that I think you're just going to have a lot. It's going to be hard to not piss people off, right? Like somebody's going to be pissed off about something. We haven't pissed off too many people yet. Notably, I don't think anybody has written to us yet. Pissed that's, off. That's a challenge for you guys out there. It's just know. a matter of time. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so far, so good. No, dude. There's a lot of controversies around the Whitney Biennial. There's also um, a few years ago. I think it was 2017, maybe. Um, oh, that woman painted a paint portrait of Emmett Till. Oh, open yes. cast. <clears throat> And everybody got really upset with her because the artist was white uh, and the subject matter was obviously about like black pain and suffering. So a right. lot of people were accusing her of like profiting off of it. Uh, and so that was that was a controversy. And the Whitney, I mean, the Every Woman Biannual started by our homies C. Fenley uh, and run by um, it's now at La Mama where E.D. Siegel, uh, is, who's another great artist we know, uh, is she, I think she's helping to run that down at La Mama, which is also an amazing gallery and organization. Check out La Mama. Where did they do the fecal Jesus? Was that like a Whitney thing? Fecal Jesus, <clears throat> oh, was it? Fecal Jesus. Yeah, fecal I think that Jesus. was, I'm not sure. I don't know. I think it was in the Whitney, but I, I don't remember. I'm just thinking about two things and put them together. And then I was <laughs> reminded about that show. Sorry. Yeah. 
That's yeah. all right. I mean, who do, who doesn't yeah. love a, a a crucifix made out of fecal matter? Hey, sometimes your mind slips. Yeah. Or in your case, you don't stop thinking of fecal Jesus. That's right. It's just always on your brain. I don't think I'm the only one. All you out there, you let me know. DM me. Yeah. You're out there. We can form a club. Yeah. No, uh, but definitely check out those. FJ. <laughs> fecal Jesus. No, no, no. Okay, okay. No, write to me. Yeah, write to him. Don't write to me with that. <laughs> But uh, yeah, the Every Woman Biennial, definitely check that out. Oh, I think it usually man, it usually runs. It's that song. It's a good song because it was the Whitney. It was the Whitney Houston Biennial. Was kind of the joke, you know, it was a play on words. Oh. Like the Whitney Houston Biennial instead of the Whitney Biennial, which obviously oh. the Whitney is named after. I a was family. getting things confused, but yes, now I understand. You get it. I get it. Okay. Yeah, so the Whitney Houston biannual turned into the Every Woman biannual, which is, you know, Whitney Houston song. Uh, and that was meant to kind of combat the lack of women in the Whitney biannual. All right. And like identity has always go. been a big um, point of contention in the Whitney shows, you know, and uh, the Whitney in general, too, not just even the biannual. Like somebody the other day was telling me they went to see some amazing Native American exhibit at the Whitney and it was like kind of shoved in the corner, like in the back, you know, and they were not happy about that. That's not nice. No, don't do that. But, no. you know, it, it, there's, it's funny, these controversies. Uh, we love, we love them in America. Yeah. I feel like we're particularly crazy about identity. I think so. You know, it's all about who made it. What is it? I'd just rather be invisible. In <laughs> invisible? Why which, do you want we're, a gonna, we're gonna test that out at some point here. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some magic maybe next week or the week after. I'll he wants explain. to get a green man suit. And paint my face green. Yeah. And just be eyeballs. I know it's amazing. <laughs> but I did <clears throat> want to bring up a few interesting facts about this day. About International Women's Day? There's, well, there's a few things going on today. Typical. Um, They're taking the spotlight away. What, what has the gall to, to schedule itself on International Women's Day? Well, there's a few... Um, there's middle name Pride Day. Okay. You know. That's weird. Very weird. I'm sure there's people who really love their middle name. Some people actually go by their middle name rather than their first name. Do you have a middle name? <laughs> Morgan Jesse Lappin. That's right. I knew that. Why was I asking? It was going to be, <laughs> actually, originally it was going to be Gray. Morgan Gray Lappin. Kind of drag. I kind of like that. It's kind of badass. Sounds more like a superhero. Like Dorian Gray, right? Yeah. Do you know my middle name? Do you remember my middle name? I forgot. I'm a horrible ha, person. Ha, 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 ha. It's Michael. Oh, yes. Yeah. But the, the notable thing about that is not that my middle name is Michael, but it makes my initials BMW. That is pretty awesome. Yeah. So my grandma would say, don't go calling that boy Audi. <laughs> I have to say wrong German manufacturer. I like it. I like grandma. it. He's not a sob. No, I'm not a no, no sob story here. No, so in I'm this, beamer. I, I'm not really understanding what this could be what? mean specifically, but I guess it's up to you. It's National Be Nasty Day. National Be Nasty. Day. Yeah, you could be nasty. Do you think that has to do with like the Hillary Clinton nasty woman thing? Well, I don't know. It might. It might. When did it? Does it say when it was established? It does not. No. I wish it did. No. I wish it did. And but uh, it is also National Peanut Cluster Day. I Very love specific. peanut clusters. Very specific. Peanut clusters are delicious. I like peanuts. I like anything with peanuts, really. I eat a lot of peanuts. Salted peanuts, roasted peanuts. You should make some art nuts. about peanuts. I should. You should make some clean peanut collage. Mm. Maybe mm -mm. we can get in a we can get in the Whitney biannual with your peanut collage. Are you gonna come with me? I'm gonna drag you there. What, to the peanut biennial? Yeah, to the peanut biennial. Oh, man, that's awesome. You ever realize how sexy Mr. Peanut's legs are? <laughs> like, why is his legs so nice and what? slender? Do you ever look at the character of Mr. Peanut and his legs? I mean, I've never really looked at him lustfully Let's before. Let's take a look at him for a second. Oh, man. Look at, this, look at Mr. Peanut's legs. <laughs> Those are hot. Those are tap dancing ballet legs. Those are beautiful legs. I love him. I think so. you got a thing for Mr. Peanut. I think I do. Uh -oh. I'm going to eat him up. Mm -hmm. Morgan, Morgan's in love with Mr. Peanut. Um, and also, it is National Retro Video Game Day, which is pretty awesome. Okay, that one I can, I can rock with that. I yeah. really love retro video games. I mean, that was most of my early life sitting in front of the TV. It's most of, of your current life, too. Um, 
I had a special situation where uh, I had an uncle who was obsessed with video game machines. So uh -huh. we started off with like, I had the Atari 800. Um, they had like Atari 800, uh, Commodore 64, Atari ST. They had an Amiga. They had the Turbo Graphics. They had every Sega product. They had every Nintendo product. And then we used to, <clears throat> we used to download games and put them on these little ROM, ROM cartridges. And then these little cartridges was, would go into this Nintendo cartridge that would take these little things that we would download from the internet and you could play any game. And my uncle was like, I'm calling the FBI. This is me calling the FBI on you. I'm out. Boop, 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 boop. Um, but my uncle would be like, you can't tell anybody at school because they're going to come and they're going to take it away from us and we're never going to be able to play these Japanese video games three months early. <laughs> But we had every single game and we had, I mean, it was an amazing thing to, to have when you're a kid, like access to that many choice in video games with that many gaming consoles, 3DO, CDI. I and that's, mean, back, the yeah, that's back in the day when they were really not considered that culturally important. You know, video games were, I mean, they were coming not up, here, they were getting popular, well, but they were making their splash. When do, when do you think that video games kind of like, or do you think they have the um, the status of art in our society yet? Do you think they think are appreciated so. the same way movies and films and operas and musicals and stuff are? I don't think so simply for the fact that the audience, for the most part, are younger people. For mm -hmm. the most part. Yeah. Which is, you know, I, I mean, again, I'm talking about my uncle who was in his, you know, late 40s, early 50s when he was, you know, well, he was collecting video games for a very long time, but, mm. and he played them, he played them a lot. And, uh, but yeah, we had access to, and I think it's an art. It's, it's pretty wild to see, and especially now though, uh, appreciated uh, as far as movies go. Um, mm. I mean, they, they're looking pretty real now. So, yeah, I think the moment for me that I thought, okay, video games are now, like officially an art form or like going to be taken more seriously was when halo uh did better than titanic oh wow so like you know everyone's talking the video, talking, game. The video game the halo right grossed more money than titanic when it when they were released around the same that's time that's pretty huge and i thought to myself that's crazy halo was released the original halo was released around the same time as titanic yeah i'm pretty sure i'm pretty holy sure holy cow i Totally did not know that, but that kind of blows my mind for some reason. So, what was Halo released on? The Let's first see. Halo, the first Xbox. one is Xbox. It right. was the Xbox, um, like Holy exclusive shit. title, you know, and, and it was what dropped with the Xbox One, <clears throat> and that was 2001. Holy cow! Yeah. And Titanic, <coughs> that's pretty, I had no clue. That's okay, pretty so it, it was a little <laughs> later. Uh, Titanic was 1997, so Titanic was released in 97, and then like five, five years later, Halo comes out. But, you know, all the talk was that Titanic broke all these box office records. And then I remember reading an article about like how Halo smashed those records. And I was like, okay, Halo is more culturally important than Titanic. <laughs> Maybe money's a bad way to judge these things. I mean, you know, that's like the critique of the art world all the time, too. I feel like just by because that something's time, expensive. I, I, I wasn't really playing as many video games. I would just usually go back to playing older video games that I enjoyed. Mm. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What are you playing now? Are you playing anything now? I actually am playing on my phone Fantasy Star 2. Oh. It's like um, a ROM thing? It was, uh, yeah. Because that was originally for what system? Sega. Sega. And that was their answer to Nintendo's right. uh, Final Fantasy. Mm -hmm. But um, I never quite won it. I always got to the end. And I, I never quite finished it. Now I'm like, I have to finish this before I die. It'll make me feel like a king <laughs> yeah. to win this game. So I'm, I'm it's getting It's a long there. one. It, it's a pretty long game, yeah. yeah. And I'm someone who's just going to spend tons of, of hours just leveling up. You know, I sit on the train and I'm just like, level up. Shooting lasers, slashing swords, yeah. level up. You better not. Train. You better not start playing what I'm playing. Then I'm playing Genshin Impact still. Yeah, I know. It's been a few depth. a few days. I mean, a few years. <laughs> a couple years. <laughs> you days can't tell bleed anymore. into years yeah, when you're playing. Seconds are now lifetimes. I don't know. No, it's like like a lot of people. It was my first introduction to Gotcha, which is um, you know like the Japanese egg things originally no what's that you don't know that it's like no. um, gotcha is a thing that's really popular in japan and is becoming more popular here <clears throat> but basically you have a set of like my favorite thing about the japanese gotcha eggs they you know those eggs that you put a couple quarters in when you're a kid to get candy or tattoos 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like that. Yeah. But instead of like candies or tattoos, it's uh, well, sometimes I guess it could be tattoos, but it'll be weird like miniatures. Like you'll go and they'll have a bunch of miniatures of like street working equipment. Like, the, you know, that's one of my favorite ones. It's like <laughs> they'll have like little stands of like train signs or like whatever little miniature series. And then there's like five designs. One of them is really rare and you're going to get one of the five, but you don't know which one it is. Okay. So you have to keep putting quarters in and hoping that you get the one you want until you get a full set. So you might buy like five of the same. You might end up with like five or three of the same one. I mean, as a kid, I used to pump quarters into those things. There's no doubt. I mean, I used to go to the uh, supermarket with my mom all the time, get frozen in a frozen section. I'm like, it's cold. There was a rush. I'm like, yeah. And I was get a Mad <laughs> Magazine or a Crack Magazine. Oh, and those are the, good ones. Yeah. And yeah. then I get to the end and then there'd be all those like, little coin machines and I get like little muscle toys, little characters. Like, oh, I love the muscle toys. Oh, man. They're great. M M U S C L E. Yep. They even had a cartoon and a Nintendo game. They they marketed well. Those things are collectibles now. You go to eBay. Yeah, there's some rare ones. There's you'll you'll rare see ones. people still still into collecting the little muscle dudes and the yeah. homies. The homies. It's Remember homies? Wild. Of course, that was the coin uh, thing too. Yeah, I loved homies. Uh, my friend still collects them. He's got. There's still machines out there in Los Angeles that That's are awesome. filled with homies. <clears throat> That's awesome. Yeah. I love toys, video games. Yeah. So. Uh, it's Friday, and that's pretty Friday. awesome. Do you have any plans for this weekend? I do, but I'm still, like, this Friday, I'm getting back into Gravity Sketch, and I'm working on this, like, prison dice system for a friend. So it's basically, I know that, what does that mean? For Dungeons & Dragons, if you play Dungeons & Dragons, it's a tabletop oh, RPG game that uses dice. And if your dice are rolling poorly, and you're mad at them, it's a common thing for people to put them in a jail. It's weird. Yeah, put them in a little to imprison their dice and say, you've been bad. I'm going to put you in a little jail and I'm not going to roll with you, you don't, for a while. You don't feed the dice. Yeah, you abuse them. You yell at them. Yeah, it's terrible, the industrial dice prison system. But that's basically <laughs> what they asked me to build was a panopticon. You know what a panopticon is? What? <laughs> a panopticon is a prison layout where you have like a guard tower in the center Right. And a ton is surrounded by cells so that like one guard can keep an eye on like everybody. I see. Are these, <clears throat> this is based off, they, they used to be, build these things in real life? Like there was like a guy in the I middle? I think there's a couple. Like, yeah, they built a couple big uh, Panopticon style hey, you prisons. Stop trying to break it. You too. It's like an ancient concept that has made its way into, you know, modern architecture where people build these like kind of Panopticon prisons layouts. I feel like if you have a lot of kids, you'd want one of those. <laughs> yeah so you could like just see everything that's going on keep them in the the you know babies and be like baby's right. first prison you cell know. yeah that'd be good you should make you should definitely make some uh packaging for baby's first prison i'll write to fisher price tonight yeah <laughs> I got by ideas. tomorrow we'll be we'll be millionaires off baby of babies. jails baby jails nice that's actually probably a thing yeah but anyway yeah that's, so they asked me to build one in uh for 3d printing so that they're going to 3D print it and we're going to sell it at Comic-Con and stuff. That's, and uh, that's I've been working brilliant. on this design for like maybe three, four weeks a month. It would uh, be amazing for you to see the real thing. Like once it's yeah, I physically need to, existing and you could throw your dice at it and do the whole thing. You know? <laughs> yeah. There's something really magical about designing 3D stuff in VR and then having it 3D printed and just like made real. Uh, do you ever have a 3D printer? You ever messed with that? No, no, I would love to. It's a lot of fun. It's uh, you know, it's magic. But you're talking about there's another type of machine that deals with like resin that doesn't just kind of take yeah. a different route. There's two types of 3D printers. There's well, there's I'm sure there's more than two, but the the two that are most common and that I'm aware of are um, an additive one that kind of builds it up in layers. Right. And that's the thing when you see those ridges on a 3D print, it's because it's building it up layer by layer. And then there's a resin one that will use a liquid resin and shock it as you, as, it's like a plate and it comes out like T, like the T1 from Terminator. Like it, as it emerges from a pool of liquid wet resin, the electricity will shock it and cure it into place and in very thin layers. So the resin ones don't have those ridges and look like, like um, factory produced plastic injection molding. Yeah, you got to follow our Patreon so we can start making some toys for you guys. We <laughs> want to make you toys. We want to make you cute toys. That's right. So go to our Patreon and give us your moolah. Yeah. 
they're actually really cheap these days too so we won't need too many of you guys to make a 3d printing purchase all right well like i said we're sprucing up the patreon so by next week you're gonna be like wow what is this i'm gonna give them all my money hey yeah and then you can start doing some sculpture stuff yeah i'm looking forward to maybe it. you can start collaging with 3d sculpture i would like to i would like to have Love you ever tried that. any other what are, like i know you do a ton of collage work but have you ever like messed around with other forms of i have collaged on old video game cartridges eight tracks uh i know you've collaged on a lot of stuff but have you ever tried like painting oh or no drawing? different mediums yeah different mediums um not on different things. i've always been i mean drawing doodle i mean but I, I i i like the stuff that i've doodled but i haven't done like drawing in a long time mm. i mean i call it doodling but some people are like oh it's kind of disturbing and cool I'm like oh yeah i have to see it i've never i don't think i've ever seen any of your drawings yeah they're really weird yeah well they're that's strange. not surprising but i'm a little bit intimidated by painting but there there's certain pieces uh collage wise that i would like to turn into paintings at some mm. point before i die you know, yeah we'll see what happens you can always uh hire a painter out on fiverr now <laughs> yeah hey you yeah, do this. make this, yeah, make weird, this artwork though. for me well that's the cool thing too i mean think about it though i wouldn't the be way... able to love it like i i could love it if i if you made, made it. it yeah yeah i've you know that's a big philosophical art question right um if you make it with your own hands i get it and i appreciate stuff some stuff because it was made by hand you know by another human being but that doesn't like make something art for me and I think that all those artists who get a lot of... She's saying it's the idea. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's I don't... It's the birth I don't, of the idea. Yeah, I don't ever be begrudge like Jeff Koons or um, uh, anybody else, Andy Warhol or um, the sculptor um, who did the thinker, Rodan. Like, you know, Rodan, Andy Warhol, all these people had big factories with like a lot right. of people working for them that would create their vision or like he would work, do one, like show people how to do it and they would make it or ask for some component to be made for it from a skilled tradesman i never think that's like a, i don't think that makes something not art just because you have like a, a crew make it it's true i don't know i i i hear you and, and i'm gonna have to agree with you yeah i'm gonna have He's to a push agree over. with you i mean i would like to do as much work for my own pieces as possible until i'm i'm completely unable to do so and i guess i would probably i don't know i always want to be it's, doing it and I like, I like doing, I like working with my hand. Like Matisse, you know, he um, kept doing like paper cutouts till he died in bed. You know, he was like making paper cutouts because he couldn't hold a paintbrush the same way he could hold his like safety scissors. Um, so I feel like I'll always be doing something. But there does come a point where like if you have an idea or a vision or the ability to do something on a bigger scale, there's, you know, you have limitations about what you can get out. Like when Jeff Toons was talking about the, the Blue Ball series. Do you remember this? The blue balls the blue or the balls. blue balls? Jeff Koons is blue balls. That'll right. go in the title of today's episode. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? The, no. the gazing balls. No. No, no. No. So Jeff Koons made these, um, this piece, this series of art fairly recently where it was um, like imagine a big painting, like a classical painting that has already been made. And, it's, you know, it's like it's, he was redoing classical works and then pairing them with a very shiny blue ball. And the idea was that you'd walk up to the blue ball and you could see like the entire classical work as well as yourself and your environment like reflected in it. So mm. the gazing ball, that was the whole idea was just to go and look at the ball and the ball has all this stuff going on, but it's paired with like a, a, a recreation of another word. I thought you were going to say that the, he added, he just painted blue balls on all the characters that uh, that he does, were, like that the, were in the paintings or right at the classical paintings. So he just added all these blue balls to these classical paintings. That, no. that would be interesting too. Maybe I should do my own take. Well, you know what? Actually, that's funny because I don't remember his name. I'll have to try and find it and see if I can put it in the description. But there's a guy somewhere on, Inst on TikTok that I follow that I love. And what he does is he takes like old paintings from he'll buy them from an estate sale or like a thrift store or he'll like literally find a storage unit that's filled with paintings uh, and he will like finish them. Right. Or alter I've seen them. some stuff like that and I love it. And a people lot of Star Wars stuff. Yeah. You got to love it as a collage artist. Right. Didn't. Uh, what's his name? Um didn't Banksy do that with Hitler and put him like sitting on a Bank bench? Banksy did something? that with, yeah, Banksy did that when he was first coming up, right? Like when he was first getting famous, he would rework some like thrift store paintings and go put them in the museum 
like and glue them to the wall genius you know and then say blah 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 blah. but that be, that begs that question too like about making it with your own hands uh, a lot of people I, I look at the comments of this dude tiktok and even though he's like popular and a lot of people like it and a lot of people think it's good work it's filled with like comments like Oh yeah, well you didn't do that. You're ruining someone else's work. Like you're, you know, taking credit for this, or I can't believe you, it makes me sick that you're destroying this person's creativity. Blah 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 blah. That's annoying. And it's like okay, you go buy it and save it. You know, you go buy that. Otherwise, painting. it would just be sitting it'd probably be in the trash, dude. Yeah. It'd probably be rotting in a landfill. Repurposing. Somewhere. Yeah, it's the way to go. I mean, that's you know, that's Wizard. I, I think do. Wizard Skull actually had some similar um, beef thrown at him for doing something with original animation cells was that oh Wizard i Skull? remember that he was doing that for a long time i remember i'll never forget and i think i talked about this in a previous episode where yeah he made charlie brown like you know like the the squiggle on his yellow shirt like his dick was bent like that yeah yeah, yeah. i like that one <laughs> but um I but yeah mean, people got him people were giving him a ton of beef saying so like how cells. dare you there's so many it. animation cells that exist like to make an animation like there's take so many like that's one out of like a gazillion but like I, yeah. I think it's genius. I think he did an amazing job. Yeah, I think if you care a lot about preserving history or something like that, you know, you got to realize that you have to do it. He's rewriting history. You know, if you want to, if you want to save these cells from being used or thrown away or something, you have to buy them and you have to hold on to them. You have to do it, or yeah, you have to gift them to some do, other museum. Then they're yours. And you can right. Do whatever you want with them. True. True. But I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to go like dig up you know, a bunch of ancient pottery and paint on it or something, you know, I probably won't do that, but I don't, if somebody else wants to do it and they can, like, should we not let them? <laughs> I know? mean, I've, I've cut up books that were from. Oh, I bet you, I bet early, you've like, gotten 1930s, a lot of grief. And some of that paper is very difficult to cut. Very, very, you know, thin paper, old paper is, is even with a sharp exacto blade is very difficult. You have to be very careful. You've definitely gotten very some brittle. brief right for cutting up like old comics um oh yeah mostly comics people freak out i'm like uh oh, water damaged you know i don't know so, comics i had since i was a kid uh i don't know i've just come into different ways to obtain comics i have a friend that collects comics and there's a lot of comics but yeah some people get really freaked out about that and i definitely check the value of every single comic i touch before i touch them but yeah yeah well if it's valuable you don't you don't cut it up no no if it's worth like five bucks and it has a few things in there that I really want, I'll I'll cut it up. How what's your what's your limit? What's your line? Like how much is too much too Probably valuable? Like ten bucks. Really? That's pretty low. Yeah. What's the difference between five bucks and ten bucks for cutting it up for your art? Isn't your art's way more valuable? Than no, 10 I bucks? agree with you. I don't know because now my friend is like, if you got anything good, you got to give it to me, and he he's doing great right now. With but then you're not doing great because you don't have your source material. Yeah, but then he gives me back damage comics that I can utilize. Uh, so it's a, it's a, a symbiotic take. relationship yeah. there. Yep. That's yeah. good. It's a That's beautiful good. thing. Nice. Well, well I'm going to drag you to the Whitney next uh, a couple weeks from okay. now. Okay, I'm down. Let's see if we can get press passes. Oh, yeah. Everybody write into live. the Whitney and, and tell them that we need press passes so that you can enjoy the show from wherever you are. That's right. And well, go check out the Every Woman Biannual. See Finley uh, and the crew over at La Mama. Go check it out. La Whitney Mama. Houston, La Bio. It's very cool. Love to support them. Enjoy it. Happy Woman's Day, guys. Yay. We'll see you, you next time. Thank you for tuning in. Take care. Bye. Thank you for listening to Lucky Time Explosion. Watch the video edition on Patreon. A green screen extravaganza experience available exclusively to official Lucky Timers. This episode was recorded at Sola Studios in Manhattan, New York, helping artists make cool shit since 2016.